Right, what have we got downstairs? <laughs> we got so distracted here. Oh, we have we haven't even ever seen this room. Wow. Oh my god. Okay. So we have to do this systematically. We've got to be really careful. All right, examine the model. A model <laughs> of the Lydia before it was rebuilt. It used to be a freighter. The white hallways, the cabins, and the saloon were added later. Okay, that's fine. I'm not sure whether we'll need that information later, but it's a nice little bit of trivia. So we got the pin board here, and then the medical bay. An evacuation plan? And some tips from the doctor for avoiding seasickness, sunburn, and the like. And here, a schedule of activities. A drink with the captain, a shuffleboard competition on the forecastle, and that's about it. A real barrel of fun. i got to be honest, forecastle is a word that, up until this point in my life, I have always said out loud as forecastle. Always. But no one in this game <laughs> is saying it like that. <laughs> Four castle, because that's how it's written. Oh, that just said something. A pitiful else. attempt to make the interior of the ship seem less dreary. A bit of paint on the walls would have helped more, especially since a plant won't survive long without daylight. I don't think that this looks that dreary. They've got a nice little decor going with you know the wooden paneling and then the egg eggshell white walls. All right, uh, going to the medical center. Ah, yeah. uh, eggshell. You don't like eggshell white. <laughs> just such a weird white eggshell. That's white. like the normal white you see that in most places. I think. Examine the alarm. Yeah. It's because regular white is like offensive to the eyes because it's so bright. An eggshell is like slightly. An different. alarm like this one was set off yesterday. Hmm. This one hasn't been set off. The security seal is intact. Okay. Right. We'll try and remember that. See if we can find the other alarm. Like who even sounded the alarm? There's Legrand's cabin over there. Isn't that one yeah. of the main things we want to do? Go see Legrand, anyway. Yeah, go see him and see if he got any evidence onto the glass. Come in. Off the glass. Is that the primary thing we wanted to do? Um, no. I think we want to sneak around like he always does. Oh. Hello, Doctor uh. Gebhardt. She liked us as well, dude. And there's the next one. Excuse me. You want something else from me, don't you? I'm afraid I do. What a first day at work. Well... Wow. Um, listen, guy, I like you, so I'm not going to give you too much. What have you found about the body? What's the result of your examination of the victim? She's dead. <laughs> well, I no didn't shit. make you work all <laughs> night long, Dr. Gebhardt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. She was shot. <laughs> Point-blank shot. Probably with a pistol. It seems like she was lying in bed. The shot struck her heart. She died immediately. One shot? More were unnecessary. And mm. we only heard one shot, no? And there's just one entrance wound. Just one. Surprise. Okay, here's something else. <coughs> Excuse me, that I'm, I'm making notice of here. Whoever killed the Baroness with this gun shot once, got the job done perfectly, and left. There was no, no mm -hmm. need for any error. When we were bound and gagged and, and whatever just as we, we woke up to the sound of a gun being fired and then we saw that there was a hole in the crate down in the brig do you remember down with where the storage was someone else fired a gun yeah. downstairs and that's what woke us up who were they firing at and why are questions but also i wonder whether that's even the same person because uh, that shot the baroness because whoever shot the baroness did it really precisely and whoever was downstairs missed their shot entirely and for whatever right. reason and left back evidence and stuff like that and messed up by throwing away the gun so it might not be the same person yeah oh yeah exactly and we know neither of these people so, are Legrand because Legrand's gun didn't smell after the first one and he wasn't and he was with us for the second so this is again I keep banging on about Legrand but I think uh, these these all are making him less and less likely to be a bad guy so the Baroness was knocked out from the knocked out drops maybe I am told that I was drugged that's how it seems. What can you tell me about it? Me? W why should that be my business? Haven't you analyzed the glass? No, I haven't. The inspector said he's the better chemist. I let him do it. That way I could at least concentrate on the body. Okay, sorry, I didn't mm. mean to upset you there, bro, but we got well, this is stuff we got to know. I'd like to have two different opinions on it, personally. But hey... Yeah. Do you think the Baroness your might theory? have been drugged? 
She was very tired and unsteady when Legrand and I saw her. Yeah, I heard about that. I must have just missed her in the saloon. And without having seen her myself, it is hard to make a diagnosis. Of course. Can you say something about her general health? She was quite overweight, mm. and the butler said that she suffered from diabetes. Despite that, she hadn't visited a doctor for several years. Doesn't sound good. Happens more frequently wow. than you might suppose. Some people are scared of doctors <laughs> and pay with an early death. It is possible that the Baroness wouldn't have lived much longer anyway. Oh, see, that could mean so many things as well. What if, why was she paying for all this in the first place? If, like, if she knew that she had like a timer on her or something. Right. Eating whatever she wanted while she has diabetes. Is she <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Uh, whose glass did I drink from? Do you know whose glass I drank from? What do you mean? Captain de Conti handed me a glass of champagne. But where did he get it? I don't know. Did you ask him? I'm just asking because you were also in the saloon when the champagne was served. Yes, but I only entered the saloon a few seconds before you did. I didn't manage to get a drink myself. Which, in retrospect, is lucky. Ah, you're right about that. Mm. Mm. Or is it? I mean, this is what I was saying earlier. Maybe it was only in the one glass. Uh, the bullet. Have you already removed the bullet? Did Legrand send you? What is that Frenchman's problem? I already told you. I will get in touch as soon as I have it. That is also what I told the constable, who he kept sending all night long, once I finally got rid of Legrand himself. Did he look over your shoulder? He probably wanted to take the scalpel from my hand and hack away himself. But <laughs> this is my surgery. And I will not let amateurs interfere with my work. That's understandable. How much longer will it take? Oh, I have just finished. Wait, was he supposed to have been working the whole way through that conversation? Send my regards to His Majesty. <laughs> oh. Thanks. I think that's it for now. No. That is it for now, then, and later. I'm going to lie down for a few hours. Can you tell that to your boss? But... <laughs> Gee. <laughs> I, I don't Could blame I him. at least have the key? Absolutely not. But if we have to examine the victim again... Then the esteemed inspector knows where to find me. In my cabin. In bed. Good night, Constable Zellner. Oh, he is not happy that he came. There is a... At all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, last night he was optimistic. Yeah, okay, so here's another idea I had. Whoever drugged the champagne never meant for us to accidentally have a sip. The, the, the mm -hmm. Captain de Conti was completely right. unaware. It was always just for the Baroness, who later did end up drinking some, but it was always for her, and we just sort of got caught up in it, which was accidental. That's another right. theory, potentially. Um, there was something else I was going to say as well. Anyway, check it out. we got the bullet now. That's the bullet from the Baroness's corpse. I don't know much about guns. Legrand will be able to tell me more about it. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Okay. Oh, yeah. and the so He's probably here. The other thing I was going to say... I can examine the windows for some reason. Why is that? We're lucky that the Lydia has a well-stocked medical center at its disposal. I suppose it was added during the war. A ship of this size wouldn't normally have a full medical center. Um... And we can't Neither Dr. Gebb, but in contrast to good old Robert, the doctor doesn't let himself get roped in for the long haul. I wonder what would happen if Legrand dragged him out of bed for another investigation. He would snap. Okay, and here's the other thing. That woman I, I we, we were talking about, the ep uh, the, talking about at the start of the episode, where's she been? She's been away for ages. She doesn't have any alibis going for her right now. All right, we're, that we're, is Legrand. We're going to have to see her. Eventually. Oh, there you go. Open it. Come in. He said the same thing the other guy did. Come in. Little bit of professional courtesy. Oh, okay. I thought the game would crash for a second there. <laughs> Max Payne. Ah, Zellner. Are you ready? <laughs> Good morning, Inspector Legrand. 
My head is pounding, but I think I'm okay. Chloral hydrate. Hmm? That's why you have a headache. I found traces of it in your champagne glass. Okay. Uh, circumstance of the crime. What have you found out so far? The Baroness was shot in the chest at close range. We heard the shot. The murderer quickly fled the cabin and dropped the murder weapon over the railing later. A simple story so far. But why was her cabin door locked? Exactly. If the murderer wanted to make it seem like a suicide, He'd have shot her in the head and left the gun at the crime scene. And if it was murder, why did he go to all the trouble of locking the door from inside? And how did he manage that anyway? Especially since we arrived just a few seconds later and didn't see anyone near the cabin. Something doesn't make sense here. No, it doesn't, and it's driving me crazy. Do you have any theories on that? Like, I'm lost too. I'm just as lost. No. All right, murder weapon. Did you find the murder weapon? On the gangway on the side of the ship. I suspect the murderer tried to drop it into the sea. He would have stood close to the railing to let it fall unseen. And since he doesn't know the ship, he had bad luck and dropped it right onto the gangway. Indeed. And do you find that probable? No. Not a bit. No. Neither do I. Yeah, it's a raven. Like, that doesn't make any sense. Or a raven's accomplice. What was the gun? What kind of a gun is it? A pistol. A Luger 08. Antique. Manufactured a million times during and after the First World War. Austrian model. The owner is David Kreutzer, the violinist. We found him tonight totally drunk on the bow of the ship. He confirmed that it's his gun. But he claims that it was stolen from him. Fingerprints? Whoa. Nothing. But it's worth mentioning that the clip was missing two bullets. Hmm. And it's definitely the murder weapon. The ballistic tests are incomplete. Actually, I've been waiting far too long for the bullet recovered from the corpse. Pay the good doctor a visit, Zellner, and see that he does his job. It's fine, we already did. About Way ahead of you. The bullet. Yeah. Here it is. Excellent. Give it to me. As I suspected. A 7.65 Parabellum Luger. Don't you want to examine it in more detail? When I have time. For now, though, we can assume that we had the murder weapon. There can't be too many antique Luger 08 pistols on board. May I take a look at the Baroness's cabin? We already searched it thoroughly. Let me... Sure. But what about now, by daylight? Yes, yes, fine, it can't hurt. Here, Good. take this with you. I scratch your back, you scratch mine. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Want to go I'll see let you uh, the know doctor? If I find anything important, but only then, please. I'm very busy. Of course. Wait, wait, wait. I have more to ask you. Okay, the violinist. Jesus. Here's the thing, right? There were no fingerprints on it. Surely there would at least be the violinist because it's his gun, unless perhaps he was storing it in like a wooden case, you know, that he never opened up, like a small box or something. Yeah. Which is why there'd be none at all. Now the fact that there are no uh, fingerprints at all means that whoever stole it was a wearing gloves or b took the time to clean it before throwing it aside. But they threw it somewhere where they wanted it to be found. I think there's. It's unlikely that it was just an accident that ended up on the gangway. Why? Now again, think back. To that woman wasn't she wearing gloves yeah i so think yeah. she's, she's some type of assassin or something like that i don't know man i don't know i don't know uh, the violinist. Raven. and i think the violinist is a douche and maybe he did have the baroness's purse before but i, I miss matty man but um <laughs> i think that uh i think that he's being uh, framed here do you believe the violinist he'll be the first person i question he claims he can't remember anything from the last few hours. Says he drank a bottle of schnapps. He was on the train, and he doesn't have an alibi. His drunkenness could be a smokescreen. He fits the profile. He travels a lot, has access to high society. Could be interesting. Uh, pff, drugs? And this chloral hydrate? Is a tranquilizer. Can be dissolved in alcohol. The effect begins in minutes and lasts for hours. Who gave you the glass of champagne? Oh, 
I'm going to be square with him. I'm going to... Do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. I believe it was Captain De Conti. If believing were enough for us, we'd have become priests, Constable. <laughs> be policemen and find out for sure. Understood. Yeah, because I, I I can't remember clearly myself either. I'm just going on what Zelna says here. All right, jewel thief. You think that the jewel thief is the murderer? Our friend would have needed another key to open the safe and steal the second eye, the one the Baroness was carrying. At least, that's what we implied. What do you mean? The Baroness was famous for her forgetfulness. I convinced her to give me the third key. It seems safer nice. for the eye. The thief searches the Baroness's cabin looking for the third key. She returns from the saloon earlier than expected, surprises him, and he can't allow her to identify him. He imprisons her until the coast is clear, and then shoots her. And thus, the thief becomes a murderer. But still doesn't have all the keys. It's too simple. Uh, yeah, she... Did he just held up the key just now? That yes, yeah. Stick? He's... He's got the key, yeah, yeah. Or yeah, is he just lying to us? Like, oh, this is the key. <laughs> it's just a pencil. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. That was the key. But now we've got him in his... Oh, I don't know. I'm not going to... I'm not going to... I'm not going to speculate. Are so, you sure that there's no bomb inside this time? Professor Lucien locked it in front of an audience and it will be open for the first time in Cairo. Let's hope so. It would take hours to crack it. And you'd need heavy machinery. Or the keys. Or the three keys. That's right. Do you think, do you really think that the Raven is behind all this? He wrote the letter that was on the safe in the train. Without the letter, we wouldn't have opened the safe and the bomb wouldn't have exploded. But it doesn't seem like him, does it? The Raven was famous in part because he never hurt anyone, much less killed anyone during a burglary. Right. It's his handwriting and he called me Nico. No one else does that. I chased man, he's that obsessed. man across Europe for years. It is him. It has to be him. But the evidence... Enough. I'll be on my way. I want to find out who gave me the drugged champagne. Good idea. I very much like the idea that we are the old raven and Inspector the reason why Legrand? we're pressing him so much. Are you okay? Maybe you should take a break. I can sleep once I've caught the raven. Goodbye, Constable. Be seeing you. I love these little animations they're playing. I was watching this video earlier of um, this thing called STEM, which is going to be really good for VR stuff. You know, I've got the Oculus Rift and I've been looking at stuff like this. And uh, there's this thing that translates full body Legrand emotions. Is risking not just his career, but his health as well on his hunt for the Raven. He's working like a demon. Maybe that's why he caught the Raven and no one else. Yeah, he's a dedicated man, definitely, and that's why I think I respect him a little bit more here. Yeah, but it, it trans the, 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 I watched this video of STEM in practice earlier, and this guy, as he was moving around in real life, just, like, translated all of this movement perfectly into the game, and it's just made me, like, now I'm watching this as well, it's just making me think of all real actors doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And, like, I really want to make a machinima as well at some point. If I ever get the STEM, I will probably, like, be, yeah, well on top of a machinima, just so that you can have those real animations. It'd be insane. It'd be so cool. Yeah, that would be pretty. I've seen people do that with the Kinect for Xbox. Yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah, they just use the technology uh, for their computer, and they just use it to to make some some cool stuff for their games, like uh, right, indie projects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Listen. Okay. So <laughs> we we can now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. We can now go into the uh, <laughs> into the Baron's room. I'm just so caught up. There's so much to do. We can go into the Baron the Baroness's room, the saloon, or the side deck. S definitely saloon the inside stuff first the in so the saloon or the baroness is one all right let's do the saloon because i feel like the baroness could push it forward in interesting ways i think now we'll probably get to mingle with people in here yeah there's the uh, captain what about the workers they never show the workers right so that means that oh oh that's the captain right there oh yeah there's nothing we can interact with here i love the look of that door though that's beautiful it looks really good oh old woman Captain De Conti is sitting at the bar again. He gave me the glass of champagne last night. 
Hello, Captain Is he the just country. sitting there talking to talking to himself, hey, looking at him? Constable Zack. <laughs> and breathing down his neck. You're back on your feet again. Glad to see it. Alright, uh tell me about last night. It's what me. was your experience of last night? <laughs> the Conti. Oh, terrible. <laughs> the air was fantastic. Everyone was excited about having a pleasant drink under the stars. And then this. You were in the saloon all night long. As the captain, I have to care for my passengers. After you and the others rushed out, I tried to maintain a festive atmosphere. <laughs> but when the alarm it goes off, I lose the battle. <laughs> <laughs> He's so pissed. I, uh, I don't blame him. It's kind of ruined his thing. The Baroness. How was the Baroness? She really surprised me. After she was so unapproachable at the reception and didn't show her face for the entire afternoon, I was afraid she was one of the bores and bourgeoisie. But then she arrived in the early evening in the best of moods. Already had a few, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Did she say anything to you? She asked me where Legrand's cabin was. I told her, then invited her to come for drinks in the evening. I said it would be great fun. The whole ship will be there, and you don't want to miss that, I told her. And then? She seemed to like the idea. She oh. smiled, and then left again for a few minutes. Then she came back and seemed very happy. We drank a toast to life. <laughs> <laughs> 